if you are a non-engineer and you are preparing for the CAT, then I'm sure at some level you would be scared of quant. Now the question is how can non-engineers do well at CAT quant and math in general? Now the first thing you have to understand is what exactly is it that is asked at the CAT quant section. Now broadly to talk about the entire section we are saying that it is 10th standard level math meaning that if I were to present the CAT paper to a 10th standard student then that student will be able to make sense of that entire question paper. Now you have taken your 10th standard exams I am sure that you will be able to make sense of the CAT quant section in general as well. But the problem is you are not able to come up with solutions on your own. Now to deal with these things you have to understand what all areas are there from where questions are asked. So the first area that we are talking about is arithmetic. Now arithmetic will basically involve concepts from averages, percentages and ratios. Now there will also be applications of these concepts of averages, percentages and ratios be it in the form of weighted averages, means, allegation based questions, simple interest, compound interest, profit and loss, time speed and distance, time and work and so on. So there will be a lot of question types that will be present in terms of arithmetic but nothing beyond whatever you would have studied in school. So that constitutes arithmetic and arithmetic is one of the major areas from where cat quad questions are asked. In the last few years if we were to put a number on it then arithmetic has constituted 40% of the entire section. Now the second area that we are talking about is algebra. Now algebra will involve questions that are based on linear equations, quadratic equations that could be based on say coordinate geometry for example, that could be based on polynomials, inequalities, functions and so on. So all those areas will constitute algebra. Now this is the second largest area from where you get cat questions and this will constitute roughly 20 to 30 percent of your entire section. Now the third area that we are talking about is geometry wherein you will have concepts ranging from flat structures which might start from lines, angles, triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, circles and so on. Moving on to three dimensional figures which will involve figures like say cuboids, cylinders, prisms, pyramids, spheres and so on. You will also have a bit of trigonometry, you will have a bit of again applications of other topics that are present in terms of geometry and so on. So that will constitute geometry. Now geometry again has a weightage of roughly 20 to 25 percent when it comes to the cat. The next area that we are talking about is number theory. Now when we say number theory it involves everything that is there to know about numbers. Starting from basic divisibility tests, nature of numbers, LCM, HCF, factorials, base systems, remainders and so on. So all those areas will constitute number theory. Now this is a relatively minor area when it comes to the CAT and will contribute roughly 10% or 15% in some cases when it comes to the CAT quant section. The last area that we are talking about is modern math which involves permutations, combinations, probability, sequences and series and so on. So all these things will be a part of modern math. Now modern math also has a relatively lower weight compared to the other areas that are there which will be roughly 5 to 10 percent of the entire section. Now once you have identified what all areas are there and once you have known that it's 10 standard math you should feel more confident about your chances because if you do your arithmetic, algebra and geometry well you will be able to make sense of at least 75 to 80 percent of the entire paper. And that should give you some confidence. Now if it is that easy, why is it that people fear the quad section in the first place? Because unless you know what exactly is it that you fear, you will never be able to overcome that particular fear. So let's look at some of the reasons why people fear the quad section. Now the first reason is chronic fear of math since school. So I am sure at some level you would have started learning math, then you gave up at some point in time. There was no way you could rekindle that interest that you had in math and so on. Now that is primarily the way because of which people learn math in school or the way in which people learn math when they are in their school. Right? Uh, we don't really learn math in the way that it is supposed to be learned. We don't really go to the base of the concepts and we don't really study it in a structured manner. 
we just start from somewhere mug up some formulas try applying them are successful in some situations fail in some situations and then we are generally scared of it right so a chronic fear of math since school days is one of the primary reasons why aspirants fear the quad section at the cat as well the second thing is if you are a non math graduate and you have not touched math at all for say 3 years 5 years 7 years in some cases then you will definitely be scared of the quad section because you will be out of touch so that is another reason why people are scared of the quad section also cat quad requires a lot of visualization so what you have done in your school days would be a step wise approach which means that you will have to start with the question define your variables let's say for example start with step 1 step 2 step 3 some cancellations here and there apply a formula and come up with the answer so that was what you have been doing all along but in terms of the cat you are not awarded marks for steps if your eventual answer is wrong you don't get any marks if your eventual answer is right you get marks even if you would have guessed that answer in the first place so that is the beauty of the cat quad section it is slightly different compared to what you would have done in a descriptive paper and that is what makes a difference as well so because it requires a lot of visualization it requires you to remember a lot of things you have to go from one step to the next to the next to the next without writing down a lot of things it will intimidate you a bit more that's why people are scared of the quad section also a lot of people focus a lot of emphasis on shortcuts and mental math techniques and at some level people genuinely believe that if you are not someone who can calculate 53 into 47 very quickly then you are in big trouble now these kind of things are not something that you should be scared of because cat does not expect you to solve questions on the go we have calculators for that right and shortcuts are a bit overrated honestly speaking because a lot of these shortcuts appear after the test is done so if you are able to come up with the shortcut during the test only then is it of some value right but a lot of shortcuts exist a lot of people come up with these formulas which are specific to one single question type and it becomes overwhelming after a point in time so if you hear your friend sharing a math shortcut then you will definitely feel a bit scared because you don't know something and that person knows it right so that's why people fear the quad section and in general cat is supposed to be a difficult test the success rate is way less compared to the other tests that exist if you are a 99th percentiler then you would have scored 45 percent of the total marks so people are scared of cat in general and that of course spills over to a section which might not exactly be their forte which in most cases is the quad section so people are scared of the quad section primarily because of these reasons now that we have established why people are scared of the quad section we will see how to get rid of the fear now the first thing that you have to do is you have to accept math as an ally now if you keep on questioning the importance of math in your day-to-day -day life you will never be able to overcome that fear right so math will be with you throughout your entire journey you become a manager you become a ceo you will have to deal with numbers on a day-to-day -day basis the more comfortable you are with numbers the better off you will be and you will end up being successful in life in general now of course you can question the importance of trigonometry in your life but obviously that is a platform that cat uses to filter one aspirant from the other because they have come from a similar background and you have to accept math as an ally you have to establish friendship with numbers instead of being scared of them the second thing that we are talking about is to understand why a particular concept or a theorem exists now if you are just looking at it as a list of 50 things that you have to mug up i am sure you will never be able to remember everything exactly the way it's meant to be right uh, so you have to understand why a particular concept exists only then you will be able to apply it as well don't blindly rely on shortcuts ensure that if someone tells you a shortcut you know the logic behind that particular shortcut if you are not able to convince yourself as to why you are using a particular shortcut please don't use that shortcut it will do more damage to you than it will do good to you so make sure that you are not blindly relying on shortcuts make sure that you know the theory behind why a particular shortcut is applied in a particular scenario so that is very important in getting rid of the fear now you also have to learn from the absolute basics so people who are scared of math and because they have been scared of math since school you have to treat that particular condition by going back to the basics and building from the bottom to the top 
So don't start solving questions randomly and trying to plug holes here and there. Make sure that you are building a base and then you are applying on top of that particular base. Because unless you have a good base, you will never be able to build a structure that will be solid in nature. So make sure that you are going through the concepts and the theory that is a part of your courseware. You also have to practice like there is no tomorrow because you have to develop an instinct, you have to develop a muscle memory which will help you deal with questions on a regular basis. You can't just say that I will solve five questions and I will have expertise in a particular topic. You can't expect that to happen. So make sure that you are practicing like there is no tomorrow. Use all the material that you have as a part of your IMS courseware and I'm sure you will have enough and more material that will help you improve in terms of quant. Don't be afraid of testing yourself because the more you test yourself, you will realize how you react in an exam scenario. So solving questions as a part of regular practice is one thing. Solving it under the pressure of a timer is another thing. So make sure that you are also solving questions under the pressure of a timer and you will see yourself improve gradually. So you have to get rid of this fear bit by bit. You can't expect an overnight transition wherein suddenly you will wake up and you will not be scared of math anymore. It's a gradual journey which you have to take as a step by step journey. And the last thing that you have to do is you have to enjoy the ride. You can't really look at it as a chore. You can't really look at as something uh, that needs to be done or that needs to be get rid of. If you look at it in that particular way, then you will never be able to enjoy your ride if you are doing something which you are not enjoying, you will never see yourself improving at that particular thing. So you have to enjoy the ride. Even if you make a mistake, you have to accept it smilingly and you have to learn from that particular mistake. And that is basically how you are going to improve. So for all of you who are scared of math as a subject and are scared of cat quant in general, do these basic things, stick to it, keep on improving on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't be afraid of testing yourself and I am sure that you will end up being a transformed individual at the end of it be it with a good score in cat quant or not, but I'm sure that if you apply these things, you will end up establishing a friendship with numbers and that will benefit you in the long run. All the best with your cat prep.